There once was a king, and he had a queen, and he was the manliest of his sex, and she was the loveliest of hers. The king was, in his private profession, under government. The queen's father had been a medical man out of town. They had nineteen children, and were always having more. Seventeen of these children took care of the baby, and Alicia, the eldest, took care of them all. Their ages varied from seven years to seven months. Let us now resume our story. One day the king was going to the office, when he stopped at the fishmonger's to buy a pound and a half of salmon, not too near the tail, which the queen, who was a careful housekeeper, had requested him to send home. Mr. Pickles, the fishmonger, said, "'Certainly, sir. Is there any other article? Good morning.' The king went on towards the office in a melancholy mood, for quarter-day was such a long way off, and several of the dear children were growing out of their clothes. He had not proceeded far when Mr. Pickles' errand-boy came running after him and said, "'Sir, you didn't notice the old lady in our shop?' "'What old lady?' inquired the king. "'I saw none.' Now the king had not seen any old lady, because this old lady had been invisible to him, though visible to Mr. Pickle's boy, probably because he messed and splashed the water about to that degree and flopped the pairs of soles down in that violent manner that, if she had not been visible to him, he would have spoiled her clothes.' Just then, the old lady came trotting up. She was dressed in shot silk of the richest quality, smelling of dried lavender. "'King Watkins the first, believe,' said the old lady. "'Watkins,' said the king, "'is my name. "'Papa, if I am not mistaken, of the beautiful Princess Alicia,' said the old lady. "'And of eighteen other darlings,' replied the king." "'Listen, you are going to the office,' said the old lady. It instantly flashed upon the king that she must be a fairy, or how could she know that? "'You are right,' said the old lady, answering his thoughts. "'I am the good fairy Grand Marina. Attend. When you return home to dinner, politely invite the Princess Alicia to have some of the salmon you bought just now.' "'It may disagree with her,' said the king. The old lady became so very angry at this absurd idea that the king was quite alarmed and humbly begged her pardon. "'We hear a great too much about this thing disagreeing and that thing disagreeing,' said the old lady, with the greatest contempt it was possible to express. "'Don't be greedy. I think you want it all yourself.' The king hung his head under this reproof, and said he wouldn't talk about things disagreeing any more. "'Be good, then,' said the fairy Grand Marina, "'and don't, when the beautiful Princess Alicia consents to partake of the salmon, as I think she will, you will find she will leave a fishbone on her plate. Tell her to dry it, and to rub it, and to polish it till it shines like mother of pearl, and to take care of it as a present from me. Is that all? asked the king. Don't be impatient, sir, returned the fairy Grand Marina, scolding him severely. Don't catch people short before they have done speaking. Just the way with you grown-up persons. You are always doing it. The king again hung his head, and said he wouldn't do so any more. "'Be good, then,' said the fairy Grand Marina, "'and don't tell the Princess Alicia, with my love, that the fishbone is a magic present which can only be used once, but that it will bring her that once whatever she wishes for, provided she wishes for it at the right time.' That is the message. Take care of it. 